What's up, Leo? Welcome to your September 2020 Creativity Tarot Reading. My name is Kaylee Jean, and welcome to my channel. I record these readings for artists, entrepreneurs, and anyone who's working on their spirituality or personal growth. So if those areas of life or subjects are important for you right now, go ahead and keep watching. I also want to say really quickly, if you're new here, you can use these readings for your sun, moon, or your rising sign, and it's also possible if sometimes they don't resonate, particularly in the beginning of the month. What I tend to find with people and what I, what kind of feedback I usually get is that if the readings don't make sense in the beginning, they often do make sense at the end, but at the same time, they are general readings, so your specific story and your specific outcomes um, and also you know just your overall energy may show up in different places in the collective so that's why I encourage people to watch their sun moon and rising sign videos from time to time if the first one they see doesn't resonate all right Leo while well, I was tuning in for you I was given a couple of different messages so the first one was a feeling of a little bit of anxiety or tension but then I also was shown a treasure chest opening <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting meditation um, given that to me like those that feeling of anxiety and the symbol of a treasure chest just feel like they're such different things right um, but I actually kind of get the sense with this that something that you're afraid of actually has a lot to offer you so I don't know if there's something that you're looking to challenge yourself with on the outer level. It could be something that you're thinking about, you know, pushing your limits and getting out of your comfort zone. That could be giving you some anxiety or fear. Others of you, the treasure chest could be internal and you've been avoiding some kind of inner work or avoiding some kind of awareness of maybe a situation that you need to change or a conversation you have to have, um, something that you know you need to do deep down but that you don't necessarily really wanna look at it for whatever reason, it just feels a little raw or something like that. Um, but even that, if that's the case, Leo, that subject has a lot to give you that subject that you're shying away from in some way is what it's really where the gold is <laughs> you know that's kind of like what I want to say about that so it's going to be an interesting reading um, overall though the feeling that I get for you Leo is that you absolutely have the ability to attract what you want this month and I think that if you go into the month of September with a commitment to approaching your life in a very co-creative manner where you're going to put out the energy that you want to see coming back to you in the world. Like you're gonna put out the energy of gratitude and you know, for example, see improvements in your life because you are holding a high vibration. Um, I think that you really have the ability to do that. I think you really have the ability to attract this month. And it could even have to do with money and finances as well. So let's take a look at your cards and we'll get some more information. I'm using the Tarot Muha for this reading, so if you want to purchase this deck, I'll put a link below the video. It's a really great deck for September. I just feel like it has such a beautiful golden vibe. message and your surrender oracle card for Leo, 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 clear on the guidance for Leo.
Okay, so let's take a look at your path card and the obstacle is the owl. Wow, fascinating. So hummingbird and the owl. Um, the hummingbird is coming up as your path. The owl is coming up as an obstacle or sometimes an influence. It's really interesting that I had that message of um, the treasure chest coming through in the meditation because the owl card as an influence this is the owl that accompanies the goddess Lakshmi, who brings good fortune and blessings and good tidings as well. So there is a sense of you being blessed this month, Leo. There is a sense of kind of divine wisdom working its way through your life in some way, shape, or form. And there's a sense of, um, I guess I want to almost say serenity with this card, your life path is unfolding according to a very loving divine wisdom that you may not really completely understand, but it is. So you're blessed, Leo. You are going to have what you need. Even when we're going through difficult times, I think it's really helpful to remember just how blessed we are and just that little sprinkling of magic in life that is there it is there even in the darkest moments you know it's the yin and the yang of life our darkest moments still have that little bit of light in it that eventually you know brightens the sky and becomes dawn right um, and we see these little stars kind of in the background so there is so much hope for you leo if you are going through anything challenging um, some of you may be, some of you are probably, you know, not going through anything particularly rough like some of you are, but I really feel like there's this essence of, you know, presence and hope and security and feeling like you can almost magically trust the universe. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Now the hummingbird card as your path, this really strongly speaks to your vibration. Leo, I want to ask you if any of you guys have been working with um, spheres of protection or if you've been surrounding yourself in a bubble of light um, or if you've been working on maybe space clearing or just raising your own frequency and seeing and experimenting with how that changes things in your life. There's a very metaphysical feeling that I get from this card, which I don't normally get. You know, some of you guys who've watched my channel for years have seen me get these cards and this isn't something that I've ever particularly seen with this card, but it's really coming to life this sphere or this orb of protection around the hummingbird um it's never really struck me that way but it is striking me that way right now and i i feel like if you're not doing something like this um you could definitely look into it leo like looking up the sphere of protection um, there's de definitely a lot of different methods for doing this. A lot of psychics will just tell you surround yourself in a bubble of light, uh, but there are actually some more in-depth rituals that you can do on a daily basis to kind of banish and soothe um, all of your energies in your body uh, that could be out of balance and also, you know, stock back up on really positive, um, high-vibing energies of the elements. And so there's something in that um, with this card that I'm really getting is some kind of metaphysical practice. Maybe it's yoga, maybe it's just something that kind of gets you present and in touch with your vibration, your frequency, your emotions, um, and just in a very calm, but very high vibe, joyful place. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting. The fact that these are both winged creatures, to me, symbolically, flight represents going to new places. So some of you could be moving or migrating. <laughs> you could be uh, just changing things up in your life and trying to travel more lightly for some reason as well. But there's definitely a dynamic energy for you this month, Leo, and there's a sense of blessings coming to you, perhaps as a result of earlier work that you've done, but we'll see. So we've got two of pentacles with the five of wands, ace of wands, and temperance, followed by eight of wands, five of cups, both in reverse, 
with the Four of Swords and the Seven of Cups in reverse. Interesting. So what I am getting from this spread, and if I can kind of like summarize the month of September in a single word, it's like, it's almost like the struggle of becoming. <laughs> is sort of what I see and I don't want you to take the word struggle and like really focus in on that and, and zero in on that because it's any time that we're creating something new in our lives or any time that we are evolving right into our you know our next stage of development there's always going to be kind of a push and pull between different parts of ourselves, different aspects of our personality. We are all divinely multifaceted beings. So when we go through big shifts in our lives and when we go through creative periods of time, one of the things that we can kind of forget for ourselves, like we can, we can easily give this advice to others, you know, and Leos often are people that are like, called on to give advice to others because you guys just really seem to kind of have things together. Even when you yourself feel like, whoa, I don't know what I'm going to do. The people around you, they just trust your decision making ability. Like for, I mean, I, I know that because I have Leo's, I have like a couple of close people who have strong Leo energy in their charts. And I completely trust their decision-making abilities. Like I just, that's one of the things that I ha always have really respected about Leos um, is just their conviction within themselves. You know, like you guys, once you know what's true for you, you don't have a problem just sticking to that. When life presents you with a fork in the road, you know, you typically at least the perception from the rest of us i don't know what it feels like for you on the inside but the perception for the from the rest of us is like that you guys just know what you're doing and that you're so clear you know i mean leo it's the sun so it's you are illuminated beings in so many ways and um, it's just delightful to, you know, make decisions with a Leo or talk with Leo when they're going through changes because oftentimes, you know, there's just a really refreshing sense of clarity even as they're talking themselves through things. So don't take the word struggle and think like, oh, this is negative. But I do feel like any time that we're going through a shift and something new is being born into our lives, the dynamics at play have to shift and morph to suit whatever is coming into being. And I really see that energy going on in your reading. So the first week of September when we have a Pisces full moon, which is symbolically for you, it's in your eighth house. And Pisces relationship to Leo is an eighth house relationship. Um, that is, the eighth house can be associated with um, kind of, worries. It can be associated with things that make us feel a lack of clarity. Um, it can be associated with uh, what we want to compost, you know, what we want to let go of, what we need to peel back, you know, layers of. Like a snake, you know, shedding the skin. It's That's kind of the eighth house energy. Um, it's not the most comfortable energy. Typically when we have a full moon there, it's bringing and shedding light to areas of our life that we know we need to either kind of like slough off or let go of or that maybe cause us some concern. And I think for you, because you are a Leo, um, and I'm looking at this and you've got the five of wands and the two of pentacles, I think this is going to be about voluntarily facing whatever that eighth house energy represents for you. So like I said, whether it's something you're a little afraid of or it's something that you need to let go of or something that you need to slough off or something that you need to clean, you know, even some of you, if you just have a very, you know, messy garage, <laughs> um, going in there and just cleaning out the garage really well, you know, maybe it's going to take a week to do it completely because you've just got so much stuff in there. It's something along those lines. And like I said, that's a very mundane example, but I think you kind of get the point. It's the eighth house stuff is not necessarily our favorite stuff to deal with, but I think 
with these cards, the five of, of wands is really saying like, if you want to clear away this confusion or this frustration or this sense of like being locked by something, right? Like you can't move forward when something's messy. Like, I don't know about you, but that's kind of how I feel. Like, I just can't move forward if something's messy and unorganized. So that can be a metaphor for something in your life, Leo. Maybe you need to symbolically or metaphorically clean things up a little bit and voluntarily face that experience of creating order um, so that you can then, you know, be flexible and be ready to move forward. And that's really kind of what I'm seeing here is like organizing things on a very physical level or on a very mundane level, whether it's money, getting your money stuff in order or getting your, um, you know, your garage in order or even a metaphorical, you know, closet that you need to clean out, maybe airing the airing up a conversation with someone, for example, that needs to happen. Um, or it could be just dealing with something messy, right? Like if you're an author and you have a very messy, very, very uh, wordy and very much unedited first draft, <laughs> maybe the first week of September is like, all right, I'm going to set this straight. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go in and and work through and make a second draft that's a lot more clean and, and more representative of what I was aiming for. So it's that kind of energy, you get the point. I think I've used about 20 million examples, so I think you get it. <laughs> um, the second week of September, we've got Ace of Wands and Temperance. So this is where we really get the sense of the creative juices flowing. This is where the simplicity that you have generated, right, the space you have created from the clearing that you're doing in the first week of September, the second week manifests with new life. The, um, the Ace of Wands is a magical card. It represents a breath of new life. It represents a an urge to create, an urge to expand, an urge that is very natural and living. Um, and we have temperance, which is, you know, striking me here as a very um, fecund kind of card. I mean, I know she's holding an urn, but seeing these two cards together just really, to me, symbolizes fertility, and it symbolizes something arising for you, Leo, something that is... Um, being conceived within you, Leo, like an idea or a passion or a concept that you're going to basically run with, you know, um, there's a real sense of a new birth in your life, whether it's, you know, for some of you, maybe a physical birth, but more so, I feel like this is a creative rebirth happening in your life. And you can really get a sense of the difference between these energies. Like here, this lady's like holding stuff in both hands and these people are like struggling with each other. They're at like a gridlock with each other. And then here we've got serenity, peace. We have clarity. We've got natural environments and a breath of basically creative passion that is just kind of coming through. So very productive for you creators out there in the second week of September, I'm projecting. Now, the third week, we've got a Virgo new moon, which is actually for you going to be symbolically in your second house, which is your finances. Um, so, and it's also like movable wealth, um, things that you own, possessions, that kind of thing. And even sometimes real estate, I would put in the second house, although that also has to do with the fourth house. So the Eight of Wands and the Five of Cups, both in reverse. This is kind of a confusing energy, I'm not going to lie. Um, and the fact that this is going on for you when we have the Virgo um, New Moon, I believe it's on the 18th, but I would have to check my notes again. But you'll you'll hear about it. <laughs> you'll hear about it at the time, Leo. Um, I think that there's some tension when it comes to your choices around finances and around how you're organizing your practical life. There's something about these cards that I feel is representing an, a desire to kind of jump into something on one hand, but then also a fear of losing on the other hand. Some of you might be thinking about investments or you might be thinking around the third week of September about where you want to just invest your energy as well. It may not even just be your money, but it could be your energy, your time. Uh, and I think that 
one part of you wants to jump in, but there's another part of you that's really afraid of what you might lose or what you would be risking in order to participate. So I don't see a resolution to this energy in the third week of September. I, I don't see a resolution yet. I actually think you're still going to be working this out in the fourth week of September, which is when you have the Four of Swords and the reversal of the Seven of Cups. So this is where you're going to get the clarity in the last week of September. It is very much about inner work and inner guidance in the last week of September. So that's really what I'm seeing for you, Leo. Um, you're going to probably need to meditate or journal or just give yourself a nap. <laughs> Sometimes one of the things that I do when I need to make some decisions and I just really don't know kind of how I want to cope with that or how I want to move forward, I'll just give myself an afternoon to just lay down in bed or lay on the couch. Maybe not a whole afternoon, but just enough time that I need to just be still and not necessarily focusing and meditating like all perfectly, but just to reflect and just to pause, you know, not checking social media or anything like that, but just pausing and being present. I think you're going to need to do something like that because um, I do see with the seven of cups in reverse, you're going to get that clarity that you need. You're going to know what your, what your answer is basically, but it's going to probably require that you just take a little bit of a rest. And that you just give yourself permission to do that, Leo. If you're, especially if you're feeling burnt out around that time, you know your ruler, the sun is going to be going into Libra, which is, you know, symbolically that's the sun's sign of fall. And what that really symbolizes is um, the sun's, uh, you know, it's crossing down, you know, the equinox. It's crossing the ecliptic to where it's it's not actually um, going up to the northern part of the ecliptic anymore. So that's where we start to see the sun, you know, being higher for the southern hemisphere, whereas us in the northern hemisphere, the sun is crossing into its lower half. So uh, the lower half of the year. So basically that can indicate for you in some ways that you are entering into a period of a little bit of hibernation or that you just need to kind of go within a little bit and give yourself full permission to do that. Like I said, like it feels really good and you will get the clarity that you need. <laughs> Your Bob Ross message is trees cover up a multitude of sins. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's like kind of a weird message considering everything that we've had up to this point. I kind of wonder if this isn't like jokingly saying that the creative process that you're in um, is it's okay if it looks a little messy because what's natural about it kind of hides the um, or it's not like it hides it but it just it all blends together like that's what I want to say Leo is it all blends together so if you're working on something creative or if you're working on something um, in a business, don't be worried that things look messy from time to time for you. Like, don't be worried if sometimes things go off the rails or if your life in general seems a little messy. Um, I think that that's part of the creative process. And actually, you know, the tree symbolism, trees to me are just like the epitome of something that just grows naturally. They just have their way of doing things and they just grow slowly over time and they're just raw, like the trees are just themselves, <laughs> you know, like there's nothing um, superficial about them at all. So I almost feel like what's natural about you as a creator or as a business owner or as, you know, um, an influencer or content creator or whatever, part of like what's natural about you is what kind of um, endears you to people and it, it stops them from just only picking out your flaws, right? Because they see your natural ability to entertain or uplift or ignite, you know, they see your natural ability to illuminate things for other people, whether you're a writer or an entertainer or a video producer or a musician. Um, 
what's natural about how you do things is really what people notice. They don't notice the little mistakes you make. They don't notice the missteps. They don't even know about it, you know? So I think that's like kind of like what I get from that. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Your Sacred Destiny Oracle card is Healing Chaos. Gotta say, Leo, it pretty much sounds like the whole year of 2020. <laughs> I hope that it's healing ultimately, but um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, I think with Healing Chaos, it's about finding yourself in different situations that you haven't been in before and recognizing that you have strengths that you didn't know you had. I think that's one of the potentials for healing when you do have chaos in your world. And which, you know, let's be honest, all of us do to varying degrees at this time. Let's take a look at your Surrender Oracle card. It says, Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Wow, and that's really making me think of the um, Four of Swords. It says, Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you are energized and happy, move forward. Beautiful. And this really speaks to that four of swords at the end of the month. I think you're really going to need to listen to your body. Rest if you need to rest. That's not just true for the end of the month, but the whole month, Leo. If you need to rest, just rest. So, Leo, that's your reading. I hope that's helpful for someone out there. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the reading. And subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps support these videos and the effort that I put into it. And you will also not miss any of your future readings. <laughs> Um, I'm sending you guys so much love and peace, and if you just want to let me know you're still with me, leave me a little fire emoji below, um, and I'm just sending you guys big hugs. I will talk to you next time. Bye.